I miss the old Kanye, the straight from the go Kanye, the chop up the soul Kanye, the set on his goals Kanye. I hate this new Kanye, the bad mood Kanye, the always rude Kanye, the spaz in the news Kanye, the racist anti-Semite Kanye. I hate that I have to make this video. I don't want to make this video. I want to make another fun, goofy little video about how much I love New York City. <sighs> but I open up Twitter and every other tweet is about Adidas dropping Kanye. I open up Instagram and every post is someone saying, I stand with my Jewish friends. So when I'm on my run this morning, my dark, cold, rainy run, my time, it's, it's a time of the day when I'm I'm thinking, I'm incubating ideas. It's when I come up with all of my thoughts that I then try to form and patty into videos. I have this block. And I have this block because all I can think about is the hatred that this guy is spewing, the damage that it's causing. I fixate on the fact that here we are in 2022, and by all quantifiable metrics, anti-Semitism, that is the hostility towards all Jewish people, is on the rise. And Kanye West, one of the biggest stars on the planet, is doing his part to fan the flames of hatred towards an entire group of people. Okay, look, this is me. This is me here on... This is me on my wedding day. This is my nice Jewish bride. This is me. And this little pink funny little hat right here, that is called a kippah. Here is a picture of my younger brother, U.S. Air Force Captain Dean Neistat, now retired. This is him flying his jet. This is Dean here, judging by his Kevlar and the fact that he is has a, has a gun. This is probably in Afghanistan. Uh, this is another picture of Dean. Again, he's armed here, so he's probably somewhere downrange. And then uh, here's, a, here's a picture of Dean, my little brother. He's in Kabul right there. Welcome to Kabul. Now, why does a, a, a Jewish guy like me wear a kippah at my wedding? Uh, why does a Jewish guy like my little brother wear one even when he's at war? The truth is I don't know. Um, I had actually looked that up on, uh, on Wikipedia. It has something to do with like honoring God by having something between you and God. I, I don't know. The reason why I don't know, I'm not religious. Uh, I only went to shul. Shul is what you call Jewish church. I only went to shul when I was a kid, like once a year with my Nana because I wanted to skip school and it was a great excuse. But none of that makes me any less Jewish. And that's because Judaism is an ethno-religion. And what that means is for most Jewish people, you're born Jewish and you don't get to choose whether you're Jewish any more than a, a black person chooses whether they're black. And while my feelings about religion are, are um, undefined, I'm immensely proud of my Jewish background and heritage. So for Ye to spew that kind of hatred, it doesn't matter if it's anti-Semitism or old fashioned racism, like the time he said, slavery was a choice, or when he said Harriet Tubman never actually freed the slaves, he said those things. He said those things with a camera in his face. Uh, or whatever other like white supremacist garbage he was going on and on about in these interviews that are now going viral all over the internet. It, it's all the same. It's all hate speech. And what that kind of hate speech does when communicated by someone of his stature with his bully pulpit it tells other people, other people of compromised integrity, not people like you or me, people who are harboring prejudiceness of their own. It gives them permission to also get out there and spread hate. That's why it's called the dog whistle, is because to, to, to good people, people like us, I hear ignorance, I hear stupidity, I hear hate by a guy who is, has mental health issues, but to others, those dangerous, hateful people in the margins, what they hear is something very different. To them, it's permission 
to, to get out there and throw a banner over the 405 freeway in Los Angeles that says Kanye is right while they stand on the bridge next to it giving the Hail Hitler salute to everyone driving by. That, that literally happened yesterday in LA. Now, let me tell you why this hurts so much, why this hurts me so much. Kanye was great. Kanye was great. Now, I don't know Kanye. I don't know him currently or ever. But I did meet the guy on a couple of occasions. <clears throat> so like 2002, maybe 2003, way back when. This is before his first album, College Dropout, came out. And I want to say this is before Jesus Walks, which I think was his first single. This is before that came out. This girl I knew invited me to go to the Hammerstein Ballroom here in New York City. Um, she had these backstage passes because she was working with like one of the artists performing or something. So we go and like, okay, early 2000s. Hip hop then, rap then was still pretty hardcore. It was like gangster stuff. If you were a rapper, you were tough. And I'm like this white kid backstage. And then in walks this like mild mannered guy. And I remember, it was Kanye. I remember he had on a polo shirt and it was like a pastel green or a pink or something. And he, and he had on a backpack. Like, I, I remember that. And we hung around backstage. He was cool. We didn't have much, whatever, he's cool. And then the whole group of us, like Kanye and his entourage, which I was sort of a, a part of for weird circumstantial reasons, we all walked to the stage. Kanye led us out of that room and he was the first to open the door this this i remember first open the door and he stood there holding the door open for all of us to walk past and like i was like the last or one of the last people to walk by him i remember being like thanks dude and like walk by the guy okay we we go on stage i go on stage kanye starts performing he's doing his thing all of his like the girls, the guys, the people around him, they're all like getting into it. They're all in the rhythm. Kanye's there and he's just like, you know, he's, Kanye's doing Kanye. And he's up there just like letting the audience have it. I'm the only white guy on that stage. And I don't know how to dance. I don't know how to dance ever. I, and I'm like, I just remember like, I'm on the stage and the audience can definitely see me. They can positively, and like, I'm just trying to like find the rhythm and dance and like, like this is kind of how I dance. I don't really know how to dance. And I remember it was like really embarrassing and weird, but I was psyched to be on the stage with this guy because he, he just seemed so cool and so confident. <sighs> it was embarrassing and amazing all at once. That was the first time I met Kanye. I still don't know how to dance, by the way. Okay, a decade later, by now Kanye has become Kanye. And I'm at like this dinner party. It was for the, uh, this artist friend of mine. Tom had a, like an after party for his art show. Kanye was there. So I go over to him and I'm like, yo, Kanye, let me tell you a story. And I tell him the story I just told you. And he's like, oh, I, re I remember that. And there's no fucking way he remembers that. But he was kind and he said, I remember that. And I'm like, Kanye, what are you up to now? Hey, good to see you. What are you up to? And he's like, oh, I'm on tour with my group. You should come see us. His group, by the way, was him and Jay-Z on the Watch the Throne tour. And he did, like, he followed through. He, like, sent me tickets. I went and saw him the next night. It was great. Anyway, I'm like, cool, you're on tour. What else are you up to? And he's like, well, I'm getting into fashion. I'm like, tell me more, tell me more. And he just starts going off about his ideas for fashion. And wants to start designing clothes. And he just, he just keeps rattling off what he wants to do. And he's like getting really excited about it. He loses me completely. I have no idea what this guy's talking about, but the passion. And he's just going. And like, I know the look I must have been giving him in that, in that moment must have been like the look that Candace, my wife, gives me when I start telling her an idea for a video. It's like an idea that made perfect sense in his head, total sense in his head, in his brain. But to me, it, just, it was like utter nonsense. Look, 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 I'll show you. I got a picture. Look, look, this was us. Look, that's, look at how happy he is. You ever seen such a happy Kanye? He was psyched because I'm like, tell me about your fashion plans. We're homies. And then he did it. He did it all. All those ideas he told me he did. See, Kanye is one of those rare few where he was an artist first. Some musicians are just musicians. Some musicians are like businessmen. Um, others are, are performers. 
and it's like YouTubers. Like some YouTubers are, are, are um, cinematographers or photographers. Some YouTubers are influencers or personalities. Some, very few are artists. And Kanye was an artist. He made art, whether it was fashion or, or music. It was, it, was, it was made without a consideration of what his peers were doing. He wasn't trying to fit in or follow some path defined by others who had already found success in the same, in the same space. He defined his own path. Okay, that, that documentary on HBO called Genius, um, first episode, there's this scene in that documentary. And in that scene, Kanye West is, is he like, he has a contract then with Rockefeller Records, but they're not following through. They're kind of screwing him over. And he busts into Rockefeller Records offices, like goes in there, and his intention is to show whoever will hear him, he wants to play his new single. So he's playing All Falls Down for this woman. Watch. Look at that. She doesn't know how to react, so she's, she's laughing. And look, look at that look. He knows she didn't care. She didn't like it. She did not approve. He knows that. Now, I don't know what was going on. Obviously, I don't know what was going on in that room. I don't know what that woman was thinking, but what it looks like is she didn't know how to react. Here's this guy, he's got a new sound. Hip hop then meant one thing, and this did not fall into that norm. So of course she didn't know how to react. His art was unprecedented, but he knew. He knew it was good, and he didn't care if you didn't like it or not, because not liking it, not liking it didn't make him wrong. It just, it just meant, it just showed that you couldn't see, they couldn't see what he could see. And that is what made him time and time again, not just a musician, not just a designer, but an artist. That song, by the way, went on to be his first top 10 solo track and it was nominated for a Grammy. He had the vision and he was right, even though he was literally laughed out of that office. But that's why this all hurts so much because that journey, that art is so rare. It's generational. It has, the, it has the power to inspire an entire generation. It tells a generation that you can, if you believe you can. And, and look, I, Kanye didn't invent hate speech. He didn't invent anti-Semitism. It's been around long before him, and it will be around long after him. But why this breaks my heart is because as an artist or someone who, who has dreams, me, of, of being an artist. I, I can't imagine accomplishing what he accomplished using nothing but your art and your own brilliance to become one of the most celebrated creative forces on the planet. And to do that at a time when the planet is more fractured than ever. And then to stand on this stage this stage that's taller than most could ever dream of, and then use that platform to, to divide instead of unite, to promote hate instead of promote love, to, to just vomit negativity instead of sharing something positive. That I just don't get. That I'll never get. Okay. I will see you in a few days with a fun video. It will be positive and it will be about something I love.